Ruin your switch. Oh, Don't no. want your switch in a cup it's of tea. It's right there as well. Oh, did I tell you the other day that my phone fell in bath? No. I was running a bath for myself because I was like, I, want to, I was woke up one day and went, I really want a bath. I've not had a bath mm. in like six months because I always get showers. Yeah. And I thought, I've got the morning off. I've got no work planned till like four in the afternoon. Let's get a bath. And I put my phone outside the bath playing music. And I was running the bath and I was in the mirror, like, you know, brushing my teeth and all that stuff. And mm. I forgot that I, set, I woke up before my alarm, which is why I was running the bath. So I thought, uh, that's an hour right, I didn't okay. know I had. And what I didn't know is I saw it in the mirror, my phone vibrating. Because <laughs> oh, no. I heard the music going, and I went, oh, it'll be fine. I was like, and I watched it just go, vroom, <laughs> and it slid down the side of my bathtub under the water. And I'm like, oh, no, toothbrush is flying in the air. Run over, grab it out of the water, still playing the music, put it in my <laughs> towel. Pat it down, still playing music, still seems to be fine. Oh, oh okay, then let's put it back. And it still works. Uh, which phone is this? That's not the iPhone. Oh, if it's the say. iPhone, it would have broke immediately. I don't even like that thing near my toilet. <laughs> I don't like that thing near moisture. I've heard the stories. Oh, it's so funny. I remember, um, so my younger sister used to have iPhones. And she always put it in like a back pocket of um, her like jeggings. You know, that are like jean leggings things. Did it bend? And no, every time she up and went to the toilet, it, she, slid, it, it just slid and fell in the toilet and she had to get a new one. And it was about the fifth time she did it before she realised, yeah, maybe I shouldn't put it in my back pocket. I was like, how many times do you need to break your fucking iPhone before you realise that? Oh, man, well, I'll be honest, like, this is the iPhone, it's the latest iPhone on the market, not the 11, but like, it was like the XR or something. I was going to say it's like the XR or, yeah, right. Xbox Already, or bear in mind, I know how fragile these things are. I keep this thing in my pocket at all times, and I use it when I for, when I for the work and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But it's not got a case on it, but I've never had a case on any of my phones. My phone that has got on my right, my personal phone, oh, my dad just called me on, the one that fell down the in the bath. Yeah, yeah. And I've dropped on the floor of nightclubs, and I've played um, air hockey with it. <laughs> um, has no scratches on the screen mm-hmm. because it's like a nice, thick, chunky candy bar phone. My iPhone that I've had for, I say, a month now. Yeah, about that. It's it spent half that time just on the chair of my sofa, mm-hmm. functioning as a router, not moving. <laughs> Already has a large scratch straight down the middle of the screen. Um, Already, because so... I put it in my pocket with my keys. Apparently, I've, um, I remember when this came out about iPhones, the difference is iPhone screens are really hard to crack, but because but the to... way they're built to not crack, they're really easy to scratch. Yeah. So We're all made of the same stuff, the it's other. just, yeah, Apple just rolls the glass a lot thinner than it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. It's the reason like um, Nokia, they make the, their phones a little bit thicker, Yeah, yeah. but they're a lot, obviously notably more hardy mm-hmm. because... I think it's Corning who make Gorilla Glass, which is based on every single smartphone in existence, bar a couple. Oh, right, 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 yeah, yeah. The cheaper non-brand name ones that you can buy um, use this glass. And they said the manufacturer said, like the owner of the company, well, basically we can make phones indestructible now. Mm-hmm. It's just that every time we announce we've made hardier, more like scratch and crack resistant glass, manufacturers respond by making phones thinner yeah, and yeah. rolling it thinner. So they maintain the exact same level of durability they've had from like five years because ago. Because instead of going, oh, we could keep it thicker and make it like more protective for your phone, they go, oh, but because it's more protective and a better glass, that yeah, well, that thinner. means we can make it thinner and keep the same integrity, yeah. And that's why I like my little Sony Xperia. It's like a really old version. It's the small version. Mm-hmm. But you've seen that it's a rectangle. Yeah, it is. So yeah. this is one hardy-ass rectangle. That I have dropped many times and it's perfectly fine. It still works. Mm-hmm. My iPhone is just—it's a beautiful piece of technology that works very well, except yeah. for any time it's in, in like in motion. <laughs> it's also really slippy. It's really. You slippy. tried holding. You tried holding an iPhone without a case on it. Uh, they no, fall. They fall out of your hand. I have a, a Google Pixel Three, which is like a similar feel, and I have no problem with that without a case. Yeah, this one just slides out of my hand all the time. It's super annoying. Maybe you just need like better grip on your fingertips. Maybe it's I'm not holding it correctly. <laughs> Do you remember that? That was a great one. No? All right, well, this is, I think it's the iPhone 4, maybe. All right. And the iPhone 4 came out, the Aerial was stored in the bottom of the phone. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Yeah. yeah so if people don't know what we're talking about. The iPhone 4, I think it was, um, 
or around that generation of iPhones, had an aerial built into the case. Mm-hmm. And the, the problem was, though, that uh, they expected people to hold it like a tablet. Yeah, yeah. And all demonstrations showed, like, Steve Jobs holding it like a tablet and then working it with his finger. Most people, however, hold their phone like a phone. <laughs> and what happened was is that most people, the uh, the palm, it's not the palm, the ball of your hand, what do yeah, you call it, yeah. where, where your thumb connects, that's where most people's phone, like, it rests against there, which just so had to be exactly where the aerial was. Yep. Which meant that when you were holding your phone normally, or, like, for, say, for example, as you were taking a call by holding it and holding it to your ear, the aerial would just cut out and you wouldn't get any signal. Yeah, and then, obviously, as you alluded to, their response was just hold your phone differently. Yeah, P- I, Apple responded, but not by saying it's a design flaw or we overlooked <laughs> it. It was, you are holding your phone wrong. Every other phone on the market and every iPhone prior to this works in exactly the same way and works when have been held, but not this one. <laughs> and as much as this it's a beautiful piece of technology and it's very it's very like stylish and it looks nice and the camera quality is amazing, but yeah. just every single aspect, every other aspect of the company just so pretentious. Mm-hmm. Like what was the one a couple of months ago? Was it the thousand pound um monitor stand they released? Yeah, the monitor which, stand, which is literally like just a stand, it's not, you know, got any special abilities to it or anything like this. It's You mean like just... the one that I got for free with a monitor I got for my computer? Exactly, yeah. It is just <laughs> the purpose built stand for like the Mac monitor and it costs nine hundred and ninety nine dollars or something ridiculous. And I remember like I remember all the memes that people going around, people like say, So for the same price as one at Mac monitor you can get a custom built rig from like PC specialists, yeah. or whatever. You can get a monitor from them, a stand, a keyboard, a mouse, Steam, which is free, like 40 games, and I, um, what was it now? Like a mobile phone and an MP3 <laughs> player, a camera, and still, and then $100 cash to go on a night out. Yeah. Or one Apple screen. The thing was, they, um, someone showed me a picture. I think it might have been my girlfriend or someone. Showed me a picture and went, Look how disgraceful this is, and it was like a picture of the monitor in the stand, and it was like nine hundred ninety nine dollars. I was like, "Well, it's Mac, you know, it's going to be expensive, and most of the technology is in the screen." Oh no, that's, that's just it. the stand. <laughs> I was like, "What? Sorry, that's probably a touch screen monitor." So, oh. I was like, "Oh god!" This and then so the, the actual screen was like another fucking grand and a half on top of that. Or Do you know what the best bit about this is though? The iPhone, like this one I've got, it has this special thing in it. Where mm. the camera can measure things. Okay. And already, Lucas, I know I can hear the gears in your head working. Yeah. It's a camera that lets you measure how long. Where are you going are. with this? So guess what? This camera is majority used for. Uh, it's the dick measuring tool. I mean, I'd imagine, yeah. And there are actual like a, a, a story that I've heard is like online you know, women when they're like on guys with Tinder or something like that and like, oh yeah, yeah. like baby I'm a solid 8 inches or something like that so okay take have you got an iPhone yeah okay put on this setting and show me <laughs> <laughs> and then get it all matched oh god oh man so I want to bring this up because uh, did you there's a, a news story that went around a couple of weeks ago that you may have missed that hmm. I wanted to talk about and then forgot about but since we're talking about iPhones it is I think it's like this New York Times, I'm going to say. Um, I'm going to Google it now to make sure I can get the headline just right. Where is it? Dun, 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 dun. I need to find It's a news headline. Nope, nope, no, 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 no. Oh, here it is, yes. It's the New York Post, and it is an article. Uh, I'll just read the headline out for you, and you can probably guess what it's about. It's called, Sorry, Android users, these iPhone snobs won't date you. What? And this is from about a month ago. So, so this is this like people getting unmatched because they're not on iPhone? This is just, it's just professional people who say, I'm not going to date someone who ain't got an iPhone. Oh my and God. Gonna, and Lucas, right now together, we're going to go through this article. <laughs> because I now have in front of me both devices and I don't give a shit. Yep. Right, so forget dreamy eyes, the colour of the ocean. For young daters, the colour of text messages is all that matters. When people with iPhones text each other, their messages send in blue speech bubbles. When they text non-iPhone owners, messages send in a different hue, bright green, as if to signal they're talking to an outsider. For singles, it's more than just an aesthetic thing. It's a rating. It's a dating red flag. And then we've got a quote here from uh, Brooklyn resident and freelance designer Katie McDonoghue. If it's not a blue message, I'm not going to bother flirting with you further. I'm just like, why don't you have an iPhone? Question mark. What? 
Yeah, my head is, is hurting this, right now. Because this is a real quote from a real woman who's like, nah. <laughs> but, Carl, I will say one thing. If somebody is willing to turn you down for not having an iPhone, you've That's probably a- escaped something. You have dodged a massive red flag. <laughs> yeah. like, you have dodged a huge fucking bullet there. Because that, that is a bullet just bill scre- of bullets. That screams high maintenance as fuck. <laughs> so what do you mean you don't own a thousand pound piece of consumer technology and instead just bought what you could afford? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I've got a thousand pound piece of consumer technology, but it's a Pixel 3 and it's better than an iPhone. But it's, it's okay though, because we have like her reasons for doing this. I like as well, like the mar- the article is very clearly making fun of it. It says, while Android users have a larger market share than iPhones, millennials feel a stronger emotional attachment to Apple products, according oh, to a God. 2018 analysis. Like, it's a fucking phone. You know what? Uh, m- if I was, like, m- Apple reading that sentence, I would have a massive hard-on going, yeah, they do. I would be nursing yeah. the thickest of chubs. Yeah. Uh, Madonna Hugh, who's 23, says she finds texting with Android users limiting. For very specific reasons. She likes seeing the three dots that show up when iPhone owners are typing, the receipt confirming that a message has been delivered, and the ability to react with messages with ha-ha or a heart. I've never been able to do that on an Android phone, no. None of that sounds familiar to me. Also, don't most people just message on WhatsApp and Instagram and everything? Everything that does it anyway. All of which have read read receipts and emojis built in. Like Messenger and WhatsApp and stuff like that all have that shit. Right, it's just a turn off if they don't have an iPhone. She says on Tinder, you message someone within the app for a while, and then you exchange numbers. You're like, I hope it's blue, and it's a relief when it is. Oh God! Imagine like having a conversation with someone for what weeks, maybe. Yeah. And then going, oh, the the text bubbles green. I'm gonna gonna not respond to them anymore. But here we that go. That person's right? dead co- to me now. Lucas, it gets better. In college, her then boyfriend switched from iPhone to Android, and it made communication difficult, creating a rift between them. Oh, their no. love couldn't overcome their smartphone differences. Um, I think that was when our relationship started to go downhill. Madonna Hugh says, and I'm just like, I'm going to play our armchair psychologist for a minute here, and she says that the reason she likes iPhones is because she knows exactly when the person's read their message and when they're responding. <laughs> <laughs> and when their boyfriend at the time changed to a phone where they didn't know exactly when he'd seen the message and if he was responding or not, suddenly they didn't like communicating with them anymore. That's high, that is a psychological problem. It's weird when they didn't dismissed. have like complete control over their communications. So what's that? Your boyfriend wanted privacy, like in his smartphone, <laughs> a device that contains all his personal information. What the fuck? How dare he? Have you, like, I've I've not experienced it firsthand, but I have met a lot of people like, in and outside of you know work and my social life and stuff. Who, who are pretty snobbish about it? No, no. Who are the people who go? Well, you you read this message like half an hour ago. Why haven't you responded yet? And send See. another message. So, and oh, that's God. why I that's why I have the ultimate solution for this, and that is the dolphin. <laughs> and, you, and Lucas, you are familiar with the dolphin to a degree, yes? To a degree, yeah. Would you like to explain your understanding of it for the audience at home if they don't understand what the dolphin is? Um, <clears throat> as far as I'm aware, I've not received a dolphin from you. You haven't now. your like, response to somebody to just like acknowledge them is to just, oh, I'll send a dolphin over. Like yeah. You don't have it- to have a proper full hearty response. It's just dolphin. Yeah, it's an acknowledgement that I've seen. It's like, mm. instead of saying seen, it's just a dolphin. And the dolphin, like, it started as a laugh when I was drunk talking to somebody. Yeah. And I was out drinking. And I said, I'm too drunk to reply, so I'm just going to send a random emoji. And I sent a dolphin. <laughs> because in the I, in the Facebook Messenger, there's just a dolphin emoji. And I found it so hilarious. I sent a little baby dolphin. And it ended up, with me and this friend... Uh, we came up with this entire backstory for the dolphin, and we ended up calling it the Slippery Duchess. Oh wow! So when, and then what we did is started searching for pictures of dolphins online, and just sending random dolphins backwards and forwards, <laughs> and to the point where we found one that's like a stock image of a dolphin dabbing. Oh no! So it's the da- it's, it's the dab fin. The the dabbing dolphin. And we'd send that to each other, and then every time we talk to each other, we just like instead of saying hello, it'd just be dolphin. <laughs> And I found that so funny that over time, I in Facebook groups that I'm in, I just changed my emoji to the dolphin. Yeah. 
And I've got one where it's, I go to the gym with somebody and they say, oh, uh, you're coming to the gym today? And I send a dolphin. And at first they got annoyed, but now they know that dolphin means yes. Yeah. But dolphin can also mean I have seen this message. <laughs> And sometimes they need clarification. They'll say, is that a yes or a no? So I'll send a larger dolphin by holding the button a little bit longer. And then they'll send a dolphin back. And then I know I've got to meet them at the gym. Oh, God. And it's the perfect solution. Yeah. Just send a dolphin. But we can't stray too far away, though, Lucas. Because New York Post had done their due diligence here. And they went and talked to an Android user. Oh, okay. And they've got a picture of both the people. They've got a picture of Miss Katie McDonoghue. And she just looks like some... Uh, hipster college girl, I'd oh, okay. say. And then we've got another gentleman here, which is Grayson Earl, which is a fucking name, that is. That is, yeah. And he appears to be just like, you know, a reasonably attractive-looking uh, brunette, glasses, bit of stubble, yeah. very well-kempt, wearing a shirt. Probably a young professional if he's living in New York. And this is him. He's an Android owner. And he's also 23. So Jacob... Uh, no, so that's someone else. I thought... Oh, so that's not Grayson Earl. This is... Uh, Jacob Landsman, they've got a quote from here, instead of not Mr. Grayson Earl. What the hell? Oh, okay, just that. So Jacob okay. Landsman is an Android user, and he knows he might be judged for his choice by potential partners. It's definitely something I'm a little scared of happening, says the West Village residents. His friends have mocked his Android in group text messages, but he says that if he were in a potential match, if he in a potential match would have a genuine issue with his smartphone, he wouldn't be attracted to them, as he fucking should Oh, yeah. That is the reddest of flags. Oh, no, sorry. Um, Grayson Earl is a professor who's talked about like, this. Oh, going into him yeah. Now, so Grayson like, Earl sounds like a fucking professor. That is a professor now. So they haven't got a picture of this other man. And I think it's a bit of like a missed opportunity that they didn't try and match the two because they're both the same age living in the same city. <laughs> and they would have, they've, clearly they've got something they can talk about, which is their, gen, their mutual dislike of people using the other phone. I mean, agreed. But then she would... Just, you know, immediately not respond as soon as you found no, out you were I guarantee user. you, within 20 minutes of meeting those two, we hate fucking each other in the car park. <laughs> it just seems like one of those relationships that's like caused sparks. Anyway, so um, some believe Apple purposely implemented the text colour scheme, which has been part of the iPhone operating system since iMessage launched in 2011, to create a stigma against Android users. God, yeah, they do. And this, is what, this, this is where uh, Grayson Earl comes in. I definitely think it's intended to create a false in-crowd thing. Mm-hmm. Grayson Earl, an adjunct professor at the new schools, tells the Post, Android text, he says, are designed to look less appealing on Apple's iMessage. For Earl, an Android user, a phone type doesn't matter, but a texting app that has good data privacy, such as Signal, does. If you're not using good open standards for communication that are encrypted, I don't think we can ever get together. So he's also a bit uh, of a snob when it comes to it. But he's like, no, I just don't <laughs> want the NSA read, like, yeah. reading our flirtatious messages to one another. So, Carl, it reminds me of, um, I don't know if you remember back to maybe like, say, 10 years or so ago, before like that whole iPhone craze really begun. Okay, yeah. A big craze between specifically like young teenagers or oh, just teenagers in general, younger people, was like yeah. Blackberries. Oh, yeah, they suck. They, they were awful. Were the worst. But they got so many like young people in through BBM, which was like oh, Blackberry it's... Messenger, and it, it was free. the same thing. It was like a free messenger thing, and it got people in like an in an in group, an in crowd. Yeah. Of... So we should establish, because when we, we're talking when me and Luke were younger, when you had to yeah. pay... Per text. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's the not majority just of people like, every phone has unlimited text. But back in the day when you were at school and you had like a tenner on your phone, you could send 100 texts. Yeah, it was 10 people text. could text. They could text all day. And I distinctly recall, like, yeah, like the um, the popular girls at my school all had them and they do nothing but sit on them all fucking day. And it's weird like, because afternoon. Blackberries as phones were, were designed like as business phones and therefore were awful. Fucking the worst. But because they had this BBM for free, every fucking teenager wanted them to be part of that in crowd. Because then they could talk to their friends for free in mm-hmm. the days before widespread adoption of um, uh, broadband and yeah. smartphones. And exactly. Things like Facebook Messenger. And I remember that specifically because um, it was a running joke in my friend group that everyone who had one, like, yeah. um, it would break eventually, and all you would see is a post on Facebook saying, lost all my contacts because my heart broke. Send me your numbers, guys, on Facebook. 
And I think one day we were getting drunk and we just went through Facebook and we took a shot every time we saw someone who said that. Oh, and I think we had like seven shots by the time we got like to the bottom of the day. Just <laughs> because they broke all the fucking time. Yeah. And they were terribly designed. But well, uh, that was a hell of a marketing decision. It was, yeah, free text. Yeah. In an era when you got paid for stuff. It's amazing. But yeah, I, I would buy into that conspiracy theory though of Apple deliberately made messages from Android look terrible. God, yeah, they did. The thing is, I've not even sent a message off this fucking phone yet because like I said, <laughs> everyone's just got everyone's got a various messenger app. Everyone has like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger or the only uh, time Instagram I stuff like that. ever send an actual like SMS text is if my phone internet is fucking up. Oh, it's to my dad because my dad doesn't know how to use WhatsApp or anything. <laughs> he can't be asked. He's, he's yeah. too old and setting his ways for that shit. But yeah, I just I, I don't understand. Isn't that a fun story? Uh, it's just makes me just lady depressed about that people fucking human that. civilization. I can't date you if I can't track your movements at all times. Yeah. Well, then throws it off. It's like, no, it's got to be iMessage. But I've okay. met people like are super, super um, uh, snobbish about it. Like, when I got this phone, like this work phone, mm-hmm. which bear in mind, like, it's paid for via the business. Yeah, yeah. And like the YouTube money pays for it, and I use it for like... Um, Basically, as a portable modem to upload videos and download crap that I need when I'm working, when I'm not in the office. Mm-hmm. Because my internet at home is fucking god awful. <laughs> like a friend of mine actually sent me a message like, why the fuck did you get an iPhone? Went, because it's the the phone they offered me with unlimited internet. Yeah. And it had a good deal on it. But they're so bad. I went, I don't care. It's for work. <laughs> it's like, it's so strange. Like, yeah. He was genuinely annoyed that I went and got it. It is like, like proper tribalism, though. Yeah, someone else's decision to get one. He was annoyed to the point where he messaged me out of the blue to like, <laughs> angrily berate me, saying, why didn't you get a different phone? Because I didn't care. No. And then he tried to like justify, but well, you should, because you're, this my phone could do this, this, and this. And, but I don't want to do any of that. I need it for the internet. <laughs> this was it's the one that came phone. with unlimited internet. That is what I'm using it for. It's what they offered me, yes. And it's what I decided to take. But it's, uh, I've experienced it firsthand. It's very unusual. Yeah, so like, it's like say back in the day with like video game consoles. I mean, even now, it still happens now. Yeah, but we're older now. Cause I think I think we're not think as exposed to it because we're older. But you know, it definitely we're, we're, still is a thing. Like especially with younger people. Yeah, because it's any it's any it's used to grasp at some sort of in group I mm-hmm. can be a part of. Yeah, and it's that lizard part of your brain that wants to belong. Exactly, and it is yeah. fascinating to see from the outside. So I know my little sister is a big part of it now. Uh, she's like right, super yeah. into her Xbox Live, and she's always on Xbox Live, and she's always mm-hmm. talking to people on Xbox Live. And it's about who's the best at Minecraft and Fortnite and Overwatch. That's the new thing that people get picked on for not being good at. It's not football anymore. It's not like athletics. It is who's the best at these video games. Carl, why, why wasn't I born a bit later? I know. Like... <laughs> that, they are the new bragging rights. From my <laughs> experience speaking to my younger sister, who's like uh, in her final year of school right now, like amongst her peers. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's just like her in-group and her friend group at school. Potentially, from, yeah. What she said, she said the coolest kid at her school, because I asked her, is a kid with his own YouTube channel who has 400 subs. <laughs> that is the biggest dick kid at their school, a kid with 400 subs. Mm-hmm. And I found out after that, that's why my sister keeps trying to drop my name. Ah, uh, right. Okay. I've got my own sister name dropping me because we don't <laughs> have the same last name. No one believes her. Ah, uh, right. Which is really funny because I think one of her friends came over, mm. said, "Are you Jamie's? Are you Jamie's brother?" And I said, "No." Oh, <laughs> and there's a little Jamie. You're lying. He's not your brother. <laughs> <laughs> Just proper like do her in, dobbing me own. You got to do it. You got to dunk oh, on your God. family members. Use every opportunity. Oh, uh, and now, like, for some reason, you're just in a house, which seems a bit weird. <laughs> I just said I'm here to visit her mum. It's the easiest way. Oh, God. Because to, because to kids, you look, everyone looks, everyone who's over, like, 20 looks the same age on that. Yeah, yeah. You can't tell the difference between someone who's, like, 30 and someone who's 40. No. So, I just found it really funny, though, that the coolest kid at my sister's school, I'm presuming it must be a trend that's um, um, the same in other schools, because, like... Uh, Stuff like this doesn't just come out. It's not in isolation, is it? No, exactly. It's, it's all a about... general trend and it's influenced by like internet and stuff like that. Yeah, it's YouTubers, it's influencers. And there's another great story we can talk about that. Uh, are you, do you want to cover another story that made you depressed for humanity, Lucas? 
I mean, I don't think I've got a choice of all this, do I? Because this is a fun story as well. 